Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel. In this week's video, we're gonna be taking a look at gearing for a V2 Limitless. We're gonna understand why it's so challenging to select gearing for this specific radio control car. And especially for those who are selecting gearing for a high performance, high RPM brushless motor, such as the TP4070CM and the Castle 1721 2400 KV brushless motor. Let's jump right into it and take a look at a few 3D printed gears as a quick mock-up. Here are a bunch of 3D printed gears that I'm gonna to use to mock up the gearing here on the Limitless. This is a 1721 Castle motor and that's gonna be married up to the XLX2 from Castle as well. Now on the V1 Limitless, we used a 22 tooth gear. And the way that we did that is we swapped out the 34 tooth spur gear for a 42 tooth gear. And that allowed us to go down in our pinion size to get only 100 miles an hour out of that specific setup. What we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna explore some higher speeds with the setup. And to do that, we're gonna find out what gearing we can use in order to get there. So what I've done is I've printed out a bunch of gears, a 26 tooth, a 28, a 30, a 31, and a 32 tooth pinion gear. And I'm gonna use those to mock up. So obviously if I go and put the 22 tooth here, it's nowhere close to being able to mesh up against the V2 spur gear. Now keep in mind, this is a 39 tooth gear in here as opposed to the stock 34. So I was expecting to be able to go with a relatively small uh, gear size and because on the website for Horizon they actually have the optional part as a 26 tooth gear in there and there may even be a 25 tooth gear as well so with a 22 with a 26 tooth gear I can pop this on here it also is nowhere close to being able to mesh up against that 39 tooth stock spool gear. So I'll pull that off and then we'll go up to the next size gear. This is gonna be a 28. So all the way to the bottom of that, you can see that gear does not even touch the spool gear there. So, and that is a 28 tooth gear. So we're getting relatively large now in our selection. We'll pull off this guy and we'll place our next option. This is a 30 tooth gear. So we've got the 30 tooth gear in there. And now we can see that it's actually making contact. Now, from the other view, if I go and orient this around in this direction, what you may be able to see now is that the gear has very little mesh there on the 3D printed mock-up versus the 39 tooth stock spool gear. And that would be a problem, we cannot use that, so we have to pull this guy off and try another one. So I put the 31 tooth pinion gear onto our motor shaft here as a mock-up, and we'll rotate around just to make sure that's center. Yes, it is on center. And it gets a little bit better, but one could argue that this would not be enough mesh and you'd have to go to a size larger. So pulling off the 31 tooth as that went all the way to the bottom of the mount so all the way to the furthest extent you get the 32 tooth gear on there and when you mock up that now it's not being fully bottomed out so you can actually set your mesh correctly with the 32. So arguably a 31 could possibly work but the 32 is going to give you room to make the proper and most appropriate corrections there. So that is the smallest pinion you can actually get on here, a 32 slash 39 in the stock configuration. And Horizon doesn't have a spool that I'm aware of that's larger than this 39 tooth. They got a 29, a 34, and this one, which is the 39. As opposed to the V1 that came with a 34 tooth spool gear. So this is quite interesting, and now we'll see what this type of setup actually means for us for speed. Before we get going here, I want to thank the RC Explained patrons of this channel, of the community. Thank you for your support. All of you will be able to download the next version of this spreadsheet, which is version 
one zero here on December 1st. One addition to this is someone was asking, can I place the vehicles here on the spreadsheet because they constantly have to refer to other resources to get this information. This is how I'm gonna do it for now. I may change the way that this is actually calling up the information to make it cleaner. Right now we have it for the V1, V2. If you have any other vehicles, let me know in the comment section below that you want on the spreadsheet or also on the Patreon website there, you can message me directly and I'm able to see every single one of those messages that come from the patron website. So let's get going and understand what we're looking at. This is V1 information that we're looking at where the diff pinion is 13 and 43. This was a change from V1 to V2, so this is quite critical. And we ended up using a 22 tooth on our version one to hit the 100 mile per hour mark here and specifically, we didn't want to achieve anything more than 100 miles per hour with this setup. And it was done based off of the gearing using a calculator such as this one at the time. This was going back several months ago where we used this and we achieved that goal spot on. So now what we're looking at is how we achieve that. Now the typical stock gearing of the V1 2734 would get us to about the 163 mile per hour mark and if we went up to a more reasonable 500 amp, we could be seeing maybe 130 miles per hour with these awful, terrible batteries here. An improvement in the battery department for this run would you know, jump things up considerably. So if we go and look at something more realistic, 1.2 milliohm should be one of the worst cells that you can use the worst packs as an average internal resistance per cell within the pack. You probably want something less than one to get maximum performance. Now we're looking at being able to deliver 181 miles per hour with this setup. A lot more reasonable and you still have room to change these because we know the 34 tooth is not the the largest spur gear. We could have went up to the 39, whether you use the term spur gear or spool, you know what I mean. So this is the 39 tooth spool and that would drop things to even more reasonable. And since we went up by five teeth here, you can do the same on our pinion gear and drop that by a specific amount as well. So if even if we went to 25, 24, we're gonna see that the speed is relatively reasonable. This motor is going to be able to hit this top speed. Now let's change gears here, literally, and go to the version two limitless to see how the version two specs impact everything considerably. So we jump over, we're gonna first start off by going to our load factor. We're gonna change this to the 12 just so it makes sense because it says here a heavily loaded motor. We're gonna heavily load this, that's a guarantee. We're gonna change our differential pinion to 15 with a spur gear of 42. And then we're gonna go up into our spur gear and we're gonna change this to the 39. It already is a 39. And we just found out that 32 is the smallest pinion gear that we can actually place onto the car. So with this in mind, we're looking at the lowest gearing with everything that's available for this car is 211 miles an hour on our Castle 1721 2400 kV motor. This is quite simply not going to be reliable and not even going to be remotely possible with ease. This is going to be an extremely difficult amount of speed to hit to the point where it, yes, it probably is impossible at this point from what we understand and know. And would I recommend doing this? Absolutely not. We are pushing the motor to an excessive amount of power levels in order to achieve something like 211 miles an hour. You have to have a lot of experience to be able to, to run this type of setup. So this is the problem with the V2. Now, even if we were to just jump and you know skip over to a different type of motor, we have the 1717 Castle motor that's available and that has a 1650 kV. It is not as strong as the 1721 uh, just by nature, but if we use the 1650 there, you can see even this motor here, we're gonna be looking at 145 miles per hour as the slowest speed that we can actually achieve and hit with this type of setup. Again, this is not something I would recommend going and moving forward with 
even on this Castle 1650. I'd be a lot more comfortable starting out at 110, 120 miles per hour with this motor, not 145 mile per hour gearing. So you can see how the gearing in this car is not set up all that well for motors that have a high KV and even the motors that have a lower KV, it's still somewhat of an issue. Now, if you went with somewhere around an 1100 KV on this motor, this is gonna be more reasonable where you can actually start to adjust the pinion gear because now you're looking at only 100 miles per hour for this low KV setup. You can go with a pinion gear of 39 and then you're starting to get into that 120 mile per hour mark. And anything larger, if you want with a 42, you're up to 127 miles an hour, just edge, edging that 130 mark. And there you can see 43 and a 39 is gonna get you to that 130 mile per hour mark. So definitely a big difference there with the KV that we have, and especially since motors that are of a high performance nature, they're going to be running some insane amount of RPM, which really doesn't align with the gearing that the Limitless is set up for. We really need the option to have a spur gear that is at least a 44 tooth, if not even larger. A 48 tooth would be excellent because then we can be, instead of a 31 tooth pinion gear, we can now go to something that is, let's say if it was a 49, we can go to now a 21 and get something a lot more reasonable, such as 110 miles an hour. And we can adjust this to incrementally get higher top speed, such as going to a 22 and then a 23. And you can see we're going up five miles per hour for every tooth that we add here. A 24 tooth is gonna be 126. And if you make the jump back down to the 44 and you use a 27, we're sitting at 158 miles per hour. This would be a lot more reasonable. Right now, I don't think there's any spools that are available for this car at this size. The only option that we have is using an eight millimeter pinion gear that would be essentially mounted to the spool shaft and then we can use that. And that's currently one of the biggest limitations as it relates to the Limitless V2 and gearing. Let me know in the comment section below if you've run into gearing issues with the V2. Well guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.